Hi, I'm Brenda Bowles, and I love being an artist. You know, people are always asking me, how do I paint? How do I come up with the images and the ideas, and if they mean anything? Well, sometimes they do, and sometimes they don't. So I'm going to invite you to come into my world and see the world of an artist and how I think, how I process, and uh, what my art is all about. I'm not a person who does realistic paintings. I used to, and in fact, that's how I learned. If, if you look at something and you copy it and observe it, that's good practice. And when I first started painting, that's how I started. But then I quickly realized it didn't have a feeling and emotion. And when I paint, that's what my painting is about. I want to create a feeling and I, I want to create a mood. So I started messing up the paintings a little bit and softening the edges, and then I felt like there was more expression and that I was able to, to oh, express my essence. You know, every artist does something differently, but that's the way I work. Uh, when I was a little girl, I used to always paint angels and fairies, and so, I never saw a real angel and fairy, so I had to paint out of my imagination. So most of my paintings are, except for landscapes, then I might take a photograph and come home into my studio and paint. A lot of my paintings end up taking a life of their own. When I start out, I might have one idea, but, but something happens on the canvas. And when you go with that, sometimes you come out with something even a lot better. So now I'm going to show you samples of my abstracts, my landscapes, and my spiritual art. My media that I use are acrylics, pastels, watercolors, and mixed media. This is one of my most popular pieces. It's also one of my favorites, and I call it Andean Splendor. It's a pastel, and this is where I was on 9-11 way up high in the Peruvian Andes at Machu Picchu. This is behind a big rock wall that people go up to and pray. And when I stepped behind and saw it, I was in awe because the way the atmosphere was that day and the way the clouds and the mist was rolling through, the mountains literally looked blue like that. And when I saw it, I knew it had to be a painting. And there was only one tree there like that. And to me, it looks kind of like an Asian tree, but it was the only one there. And it, had, it made me think that somebody had planted it there. And under the tree, there even was one person either meditating or in awe like I was because the sight was so glorious. And where she's sitting, it drops way down. This painting is called Three Sisters. And I have two sisters, and when I painted this, we were having an altercation. And they left the house. I was in my backyard. I heard the rustle of leaves, and I was thinking of them. So what this represents is sometimes we can be all enmeshed like one on the top, but sometimes we have to stand alone. And at the same time as sisters, we can shade and comfort each other. And I purposely made the trunks thin because I wanted us to be strong but flexible enough to bend with the wind. This is one of the paintings that really took on a life of its own. I was doing an abstract, and all of a sudden I saw the image of that woman. And I liked what was happening, so I decided to develop it more. And when I fin finished her, I was quite pleased, but then oh, when I looked over on the left-hand side, I thought, oh my goodness, that looks like fire. And I thought, she looked kind of pensive and reflective, and I saw that fire, and I thought, I think this painting is about passion. And I couldn't come up with a name, a title for this painting, so I did a contest, and I had people submit all kinds of uh, entries, and finally the perfect name came up by Deborah Joy, and uh, she did love-passion-longing. And I think she really did capture the feeling of this painting. This painting is all about doubts and fears and challenges. I was illustrating a chapter of a book called Spiritual Economics, and it was talked about when you have doubts and fears. And I thought, how am I going to illustrate that? And I thought the only way I could do it was to do it abstractly. 
So all of these little circles everywhere, they represent seeds of doubt and fear. And when you have those doubts and fears and challenges, you feel trapped. So that's why I put this netting in here. You feel trapped. But in the process, something is trying to show through. And something is even trying to shine through. And if you keep your faith and stay on course, something good always arises. I'm very excited about this painting. It's a commissioned piece, and my client told me she was absolutely ready for love and romance in her life. And she wanted a painting that she could use for visualization, something that she could look at and dream about and, and really feel the essence. When she saw this painting, I felt so blessed because she literally cried when she saw it and she said this was exactly what she wants. And isn't this what we all want? More love in our lives? So I can't wait to see what materializes and meet the man of her dreams. This painting is about nourishing the relationships that are the most important to us. You know, everybody is so busy and, and we're just so busy being busy that we often neglect those relationships that need us the most. And I'm talking about relationships with our loved ones, our children, even our special friends. And notice this painting shows a heart that is cleansed. This is a heart that loves and this love is flowing down into the relationship so that these two beings are giving each other unhurried, focused attention, the loving time they need to thrive. The best thing we can give to one another is our unhurried, undistracted attention. Mm -hmm.